Real quick, my friends, before we get this video started, you guys should know that 4th of July is right around the corner. What does that mean? That means when you're going out doing your 4th of July activities, hanging out with your friends, doing all of the American things you do on 4th of July, you need to be on the red, white, and blue game. So we want to make sure you're covered in that area. Wrenchworks just dropped a new special edition red, white, and blue. We've got a t-shirt, a hat, sticker, key tag, and for the ladies, we got some, we got a sweet tank top. So uh, guys and girls, make sure you guys got your both covered get them get they get the whole squad covered with the red white and blue it is a limited edition this special edition we don't have tons but it is in stock ready to go on the website make sure you guys pick up that stuff and we can get that stuff out to you guys before 4th of July so get yourself covered for 4th of July let's get this video started To another video on the silver truck here this is actually episode number two so if you guys missed episode number one make sure you go back check out episode number one on the silver truck here so we're on the silver truck until she's done uh, today we're jumping into fuel system mostly low pressure fuel system I've got a little bit of our high pressure fuel system over here so before we go ahead and put our new cylinder head back on it some of the fuel system is actually easier to get to now so that's why we're kind of switching gears uh, from engine to a little bit of fuel system so we're gonna start at the back and work our way forward so at the tank right so main heart of uh, low pressure fuel system on these Ram trucks lift pump so the factory in-tank pump on these trucks. We've done a test uh, back when we had my dually. We hooked up a fuel pressure gauge on a factory lift pump. Uh, nothing wrong with them, but they are not super great um, and they do drop uh, fuel pressure. So what we've got here and what I'm a big fan of to remedy low pressure, uh, better filtration, overall just starting fresh with the best that we can put on this truck is the Fleece Power Flow lift pump. This is their in-tank pump. Um, and what this is gonna say, I'm, I'm saying um, I'm saying um again. I gotta stop with the ums. Gotta cut the ums. So in-tank lift pump, we do not need to drill a hole for a sump. We don't need to mount anything on the frame. Uh, I'm a big fan of, I still, I still love everything else that we use uh, on these fourth gen trucks. I'm not a huge fan of putting like sumps on them and not that you need to, but this fleece power flow pump is super, super sweet. It is drop in ready to handle a lot of power. We've got two pumps down here. Uh, all the fuel basically comes in through the bottom here um, for your, your low fuel pickup, but I have always been a huge fan on these. I have one on the 15 have one on the 18 they have been awesome super quiet so we're going to use this as the heart of our low pressure fuel system going up to the frame uh, we're going to delete our factory fuel filter on the truck so the factory fuel filters the lids crack on them a bunch of times so they're prone to a couple little problems along with uh not having the best filtration so what we've got is this is actually a new product so i told you guys we were going to be using some of what we've already used before that we know is tried and true and good and then this is actually a little bit of a different part from the guys over at fleece this is their auxiliary fuel filter base but this is their uh heated auxiliary fuel filter base so warmer climate stuff like that this has actually got a heater in here which is new and different uh, so we're going to go ahead and install one of these on the silver truck as well so got that so we've got this filter this actually will bolt onto the side of the cylinder head so we will some of this stuff we will need to put the cylinder head back on to like complete uh, in conjunction with our auxiliary fuel filter uh, right here we have got uh, their fuel filter delete. You have to run basically this piece along with the filter base. So moving up from there, that's pretty much our low pressure system. So low pressure fuel going up to our CP3. I am gonna go ahead and mention this now just because we might get to that today as well. Again, one of those things where it's easier to kind of do with the cylinder head off of the truck is a fleece CP3K 
CP3 pump. So we're not gonna leave the factory unit on there. I told you guys we were gonna go through this thing top to bottom and that includes a new CP3. So this removes all of your fueling limiters that are kind of built into a factory pump, uh, a little bit more output, uh, fresh, just a fresh unit, you know? Who doesn't love a fresh unit? So um, that's pretty much a brief description of the parts that we're gonna be using fuel system wise on the truck until we go a little bit further with the cylinder head. So we've got a lot of, a lot of stuff to put on the truck. I'm trying to think if I missed any details, but really we're just going to start tearing the truck apart. We're going to go ahead and drop the fuel tank. You guys know I'm a big fan of dropping uh, the fuel tank or, I mean, you can take the bed off as well, but we're going to drop the fuel tank out, make sure that it's clean inside there and everything is good before we go ahead and do this. We'll clean the uh, factory line. So another awesome thing about this pump is basically utilizes factory lines. This is just a very, very clean way of getting a very high quality, consistent, reliable pump that can support uh, support power. So utilize factory lines up to our filter base. Um, so we're gonna drop the tank. That's gonna be the first thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna drop the tank and work our way up to the engine bay. So let's get to work. Like nice and empty so it doesn't try and fall on you all right well we got the fuel tank loose now I can go up top here and look at all of our connections and get it all uh, disconnected before we drop it all the way down you don't really I mean I've done it with the drive shaft in you just have a lot less room to to work so that's why some guys just remove the bed honestly if we had if we had lifts in here we might actually have pulled pulled the bed uh, but or just put the truck up on the lift to do this obviously but you know what you gotta get you gotta you gotta just get it done either way so all right let's move up top here we'll get these lines disconnected after a little bit of time getting the tank out and a lot of time cleaning the tank up we now have a semi presentable tank that i can show you guys uh went ahead obviously you want to clean this up really well before you go ahead and start pulling out your factory fuel pump inside here uh, the nice thing again about the fleece unit is that it drops completely in uh, you don't have to worry about basically any of that stuff so uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this uh, highly specialized uh, tool right here. I'm sure they're I'm sure they actually make a uh, make a tool for that, but See I'll probably even I'll probably keep cleaning this before I take this out just because You don't want anything you Don't want anything inside the tank focus on that mm -hmm. see the fleece fleece logo in these fittings mm -hmm. it's pretty wild that's why I say when you got every 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 nut and bolt they even make the fittings that's wild all right so what we're doing here guys uh, I still need to clean up the tank uh, but what the auxiliary filter 
the way the auxiliary filter set up, I actually just went over there and looked at the 15 because I couldn't remember what we did on the 15. So uh, the lift pump by itself is designed to work with factory filters. So there is a water separator underneath the truck all the way back by the tank and your uh, fuel filter underneath your engine bay, which is kind of a pain to get to. So uh, this, this auxiliary fuel filter is actually easier to access, access as well inside the truck, but what we need to do in order to do that, we're actually gonna run a new line from the feed line from the filter base up to the auxiliary filter with uh, the half inch fuel line that they give you and have it be all AN push lock stuff. So we're gonna change this fitting out real quick and I did not remember that in the beginning. Uh, so I forgot to mention that, but we're doing that now. So this will get an AN line, we'll do a push lock and we'll run the uh, wiring harness and the new line all at the same time, but we'll still utilize your factory, all your factory return stuff, which is nice. So just getting that prepped up because we're gonna clean the tank, put this bad boy in, we'll be, we'll be cruising. back in just wanted to catch up really quickly so we've got our lift pump in our fuel tank is cleaned up inside and out uh, we went ahead and cleaned up all the uh, factory stuff underneath there that we won't need again we won't need our factory uh, feed line going up to our factory fuel filter base so we went ahead and just basically took that completely out I'm always just a fan like it could have stayed in there and we could have ran our extra line up to the new base with it in there but it's just cleaner if you take the stuff out. So remove that and we're pretty much ready to put, it, put, the, uh, put the tank back in. So that's what we're gonna do, put the tank in and start running our new uh, half inch feed line up to the, uh, the new fuel filter base, which we have not put in yet. So that's where we're at, keep chugging along with this. up here for one quick second before we keep moving along here so it is very hard to uh, get some of the get some of the fancy angles on this truck again I wish you know if we had a lift it's it's okay boys it's okay we can do this on the ground you're just gonna miss out on a little bit of the angles and it's kind of seeing every little detail but went ahead and got the filler neck all cleaned up this was pretty gunked up pretty nasty but fuel tank is back in there kind of hard to see everything don't mind the frame we are gonna go ahead and paint the frame on this bad Larry fuel tank back in it the wiring harness and the new half inch line are ran okay you guys can see it I left it pretty much right underneath where we need to put it in the engine bay harness is ran inside the wheel well very nicely along with the OEM harness found a nice place for the relay gonna want to make sure you go ahead and install this harness that they provide you with the factory harness is just not up to the job of carrying all that power back there for the two pumps in the fleece power flow lift pump so easy harness power ground no big deal inside the engine bay we go because that is where we are left off so factory fuel filter right here that's gonna go bye bye don't need that sucker anymore. We're gonna go ahead and install the fleece uh, auxiliary fuel filter. Again, these factory fuel filters, the filters are expensive, the crack, the cap likes to crack, and you know, st stock is just whack, boys. We're just gonna change all that up. Gonna install the fuel filter delete, so this filter base is pretty interesting if you've never had one really apart. Here's your fuel filter, here's all the return stuff, so it's kind of integrated together, so that's why you need to go ahead and do the Fuel filter delete block right here, which takes care of all of your return fuel. That's gonna go back to the tank. And then you, you'll see it after I plumb it up. Looks like a spaghetti mess in here currently, but we're gonna go ahead and fix all that. Make it all clean, make it all nice, neat. But we're gonna go ahead and remove fuel filter and the return side of that is integrated as well. And then down here, 
we've got our CP3, which we're going to be changing that sucker out as well. So you guys can see I've already started kind of disconnecting things and stuff. Let's get to work. So here is what we just took out of the truck a little bit more up close so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. You guys can see the manifold here a little bit while well, this connection here between uh, the front and back side return. So your return fuel does run through here and then your fuel filter bolts like so to this bracket here and this takes care of your feed so you've got that fuel line that ran from your tank goes up to your fuel filter right here through your fuel filter and this is what goes right to your CP3 so here's what we have done we've taken that off we've got a new fuel line that's going to come up we've got a new filter and we're going to run a, another half inch line big boy stuff here from our new auxiliary filter to our CP3 so none of this stuff is going to be reused but just to explain a little bit of the feed and the return, let's look at the return in the truck. That way you guys can see a little bit more just in case it confuses some of you. Again, we've been over this, but not in a while. If you would imagine that this is now taking the place of what I just showed you for the feed, we've got our line coming from our tank up here into our new fuel filter out is here and that is going to go to our cp3 with some more half inch line return side let's go over that real quick on the engine some of it's not so visible to the eye but you've got a return right here that goes on your fuel rail which will again be on the side of the cylinder head return from your rail return from your cp3 goes through that connection that manifold whatever you want to call it and you've got your return from the back of the cylinder head a lot of guys won't see that when they pull cylinder heads make sure you get that banjo bolt out of the back of the cylinder head and then from there if we can maybe zoom another banjo connection and a return line that goes back to your tank so there's your feed there's your return that's why we've got this block here to take care of our return and then our new fuel filter will take care of our feed and we are down to getting this factory CP3 unit out of the truck here. So that's what we're going to work on next. friends well I know it's kind of hard to see in here with some of the angles it's a little cramped can't really see exactly what I'm doing but we've got our fleece cp3k pump installed and we are pretty much at a good stopping point for this video the majority of the fuel system components uh, low pressure and high pressure are installed we've still got injectors to show you guys uh, and again when the cylinder head goes back on we've got another round of new parts that are coming in for this thing but Fleece CP3K, CP3 pump installed. Again, just a very good upgrade if you guys aren't looking to have a lot of horsepower, but you need a CP3 pump. Um, it is great for a all around good pump, a little bit more power, remove, remove some of the fuel limiting restrictions that stock pumps have, uh, but again, isn't gonna break the bank if you just need a CP3 and don't wanna go to a 10 mil pump. So perfect for this build. Went ahead and got our delete block installed and then our power flow lift pump in the pump. So everything is about 90% done. Not everything is tight and complete with the lines and such, but will be when we've got our cylinder head installed. Our, our auxiliary fuel filter uh, that attaches to the side of the head is going to be going on. But yeah, there you go. That is what we have got accomplished on this video. 
Hopefully you guys are pumped. I'm super pumped for this build. Lots of new parts. Again, fuel system stuff, you just wanna make sure one thing. One thing on the fuel system stuff is that you need to be clean, and that's why we're kind of going through the whole entire fuel system, new lines, new everything, starting at the back all the way to the front. Make sure everything is clean, and you're taking care of that. So. Before you guys go, make sure you head over to wrenchworks.com and check out the limited edition red, white, and blue stuff for 4th of July. That's all I got for you guys. Head over there, check that stuff out. Make, you gotta be with got to be wearing some red, white, and blue on the 4th of July. So, wrenchworks.com. We'll see you guys in the next video. Hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next video very soon. See you.